The family is a topic which we will look at in great detail this term. For sociologists, the family is often seen as the beginning of socialization. Indeed, it is the seed of society itself. In recent decades, many old people have no longer been able to rely on their offspring for support, which was common 50 years ago. Many children are brought up by only one parent, something virtually unheard of before the 1960s. We can certainly say that during the last half century, we have seen an enormous change in traditional family structures. The extended family lasted well into the early 1900s, and this kind of strong family unit was essential due to property ownership. Housing often was scarce, and it was necessary for people to live with parents and take over the property when their parents died. Of course, people still benefit from their family line. Still today, people generally inherit any money that their mother or father might have. In the UK, the last 50 years has also seen a decrease in the number of offspring parents have. Whereas in the 1950s, only 10% of offspring were only children. This number has risen. Nowadays, this is the case for just over a third of children. We are all familiar with the nuclear family, which has been the dominant family structure in the UK for the last 60 years at least. However, recent changes show that our idea of the traditional nuclear family as the cornerstone of British family life is changing. There have been emerging patterns which are eroding this structure, namely the rise of step families, cohabitation, lone parenting and the rapid increase in those living alone. We are going to explore these areas in turn and look at their effect in terms of the family. Firstly, step families are becoming more and more common. Step families are created when one or both partners have a child or children from a previous relationship. In 1980, the percentage of children under 13 who are living with one parent and their new partner was just 4%. In 2008, this figure had increased to 20%. The USA has seen an even greater rise. New statistics show that almost half of under-13s are living in a step family. Now, we can still call the step family structure a nuclear family, as it does follow the structure of two parents and dependent children. However, it also creates somewhat of a nuclear blur. Stepbrothers and sisters may belong to two family units, so where do we draw the line at which family they belong to? Cohabitation, when partners do not marry yet live together as a family, has also increased. In 2006, of the 17.5 million families in Britain, nearly 3 million of these comprised unmarried couples. What does this mean to the nuclear family? Firstly, the traditional view of a nuclear family requires married parents, so we can't put these types of family under this umbrella. Statistics show that even if cohabiting couples have children, they are more likely to separate than their married equivalents. Lastly, we need to look at the rise of the DINCS, which stands for Dual Income No Kids. As Clark and Henwood outline, many cohabiting couples are choosing a life without children, putting consumer spending first. Lone parenting is a relatively recent family structure, which has rapidly grown in the last half century. In 1972, only one in 14 children lived in a lone parent family. When we compare this with today's figure of one in four, we can see that this is a rapid increase. In the past, lone parenthood was overwhelmingly the result of a death of a parent. Nowadays, however, it is increasingly a choice. Some sociologists argue that this increase is due to the outlook of women. Where women once were willing to accept an unhappy or abusive marriage, now many will choose lone parenthood. Often, this can be just a transitory phase before they find a new partner. This view of women's attitudes and lone parenting is highly debated because some figures show that the largest group of lone parents are mothers who have never married. You can find counter-arguments for these ideas in Butler and Jones. 
One difficulty for single parents is that they are a social group who are much more likely to suffer from poverty and hardship. They are more likely to live in rented accommodation and have childcare issues. Lastly, an increasing number of people are choosing to live alone. The number of people living alone in Britain has more than doubled in the last 20 years. In 1990, just over 4 million people lived alone. Now this figure has reached 8.5 million, an incredibly rapid growth which has had enormous effects on the traditional nuclear family. This number represents a great chunk of the population who either by choice or necessity are outside the traditional family unit. Some think that these changes may not help the community. In fact, there are many arguments that this rise in alternative household structures will create a more isolationist and less community-based society, where close bonds, which are usually formed within the family, have no place. Leaving aside whether or not the housing even exists for this boom, an important factor which must be looked at is the disproportionate expense for those living on their own. By this I mean the burden of all costs is shouldered by one wage instead of two, and of course one person is using the energy which could be shared between a group, having a greater impact on the environment too. However, on a more positive note, people, especially women, are proving to be extremely resilient.